Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everyone, I'm Mark Wallace. Welcome to the show. Well, before we begin, I'd like to ask you to subscribe. It's free and it makes sure that you can catch every single show. It also lets our sponsors know that you're watching and that will help us create more shows in the future. Well, this week we have the same question from two different people. So let's take a look. I would like to know about the inverse square law in photography, what it is, how it works, and how important it is in photography. Well, that comes from Herbert and Prem. And guys, the inverse square law is very important to photography. It's something that's used to measure all kinds of things like gravity and sound waves, radiation, electricity, and well, light. It's a mathematical equation that looks something like this. Now in physics, an inverse square law is any physical law stating that a specified physical quantity or strength is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source of that physical quantity. Huh? Yeah, I know. So unless you're the president of your high school's math club, that's probably as clear as mud. But don't worry, the inverse square law is actually pretty easy to understand, and once you understand it, it will really help you improve your photography. For photographers, the inverse square law is important because it explains the way light behaves. Specifically, it helps photographers who are using off-camera flashes understand something called light falloff. So let's dive in a little deeper. When we apply the inverse square law to light, we discover that the intensity of light radiating from a point source is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source, so an object twice as far away receives only one quarter the energy. All right, well, let me put that into plain English. Let's say we have a flash set up and we have a model one foot away. Well, if we move the model twice as far from the light, which is two feet, how powerful will that light be falling on the model? Well, it seems like it should be half the power but that's not right. Light follows the inverse square law, and that means that the power of the light will be inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Now, let's uh, really try to dial this in. So if we take our distance, which is two feet, and we square it, we get four, and the inverse of four is one quarter. Now that means that every time you double the distance from your source of light, we're getting only one quarter of the power. Now again, I know this sounds very confusing, so let's take another look at our animation, and I really think it's gonna clear some things up. Now first, let's set up our light source. Now next, let's plot a scale of feet from one to 10 feet at the bottom. Now let's take a look at how the light gets dimmer or falls off using the inverse square law. All right, let's say that our light is at full power at one foot. We'll put a little one there. Now if we go to two feet or twice the distance, the light will be at one quarter power. Now if we double the distance again, we see that the light falls to one sixteenth power, and at eight feet, it's actually one sixty-fourth power. Now to get these numbers, all we're doing is just taking the distance and squaring it. So two times two equals four, and four times four equals sixteen, and using this method, we can fill in the rest of the values. Now notice how the light drops in power very quickly and then it slows down as it gets farther from our light source. If we convert our equations to percentages, it's a little easier to understand. Now there's not much difference in the power of our light from four feet to 10 feet, but there's a huge difference from one foot to two feet. Well, now that we know all about some fancy math, all that fun stuff, let's go over to the studio and see this in practice and we can learn how we can apply this to some real life situations. Well, what we've done here is I've set up this sort of uh, science experiment and we have our source of light. We have this panel of just white foam core here. And then on the ground, we've put a tape measure and then we've measured out different distances from uh, down here. We've got one foot, we've got two feet, we have four feet, eight feet, all the way up to 16 feet. 
And so we have all of our distances measured out, so we're doubling each time. And then what I've done is I've already taken some pictures of this. So what we did here is at very first, I had this, this uh, board set up one foot from our source of light, and I took a picture of that. And you can really see that there is dramatic light fall off from the left and the right edges of this uh, white board here. So then the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move this, double the distance. So it's now at two feet instead of one feet away. And again, I took a picture of that. And you can see we still have pretty dramatic light fall off. But watch what happens as we start moving a little bit farther away. So now we are at four feet from our light source. Again, I have taken a shot of that. And you can see that the light fall off is getting less and less dramatic. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna zip all the way over here to eight feet. And now at eight feet, you can start to see some really significant changes. So here's that shot at eight feet. And again, you can see that the light fall off is much, much less. And then look at this. This is something that's pretty amazing. All the way over here at 16 feet, you can see that the illumination of this shot, so here's a shot that I took again earlier. You can see that the illumination from the right side to the left side of our white panel it's almost exactly the same. In fact, it's, it's totally indiscernible, the difference in light from one side to the other. And that has a lot of impacts on how we shoot in a real life situation. In fact, what we want to do is take all of this math concepts and this theory and put it into practice. So we're going to have a model come here in a second, and we're going to show you how all of this works in real life and how you can use this in different lighting scenarios and situations to really control how your light looks on your subject. All right, now we're gonna take what we've learned and put it into practice. Sam is here, we're so glad you're here, Sam. And what we're gonna do is, uh, first we have Sam, and she is literally just inches from our softbox. In fact, I'm gonna walk over here, and you can see that she is about just a little under a foot, so her nose is right about a foot from our softbox. So let me take a picture and show you how amazing this looks. So look right at me, Sam, perfect, just like that. Bamo. Okay, now this shot, you can really see that there's dramatic light fall off. And of course, because the dramatic light fall off is so great, even the background goes completely to black. So we have this really high contrast look. So if you want that really amazing high contrast look just to isolate your subject, get them really, really close to the light. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this light exactly where it is, but Sam and I are gonna walk all the way down here to where we've measured 16 feet away. And so what we've done is we've me uh, metered this previously, and I know that this now is metered at 2.8. And so it's a significant power dis difference between what we just shot and this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot one more time, and you'll see that Sam, although we still have that strong side light, we have uh, consistent light from the side, each side of her face. We'll still get some shadows, but you'll see that it's a really dramatic difference. So Sam, again, look right at me, beautiful, just like that, perfect. Okay, once again, you can see that there's a really big difference between the first shot that we took and the second shot that we took. Metering, we got the same exposure, but we got a dramatic difference in contrast. Now, the next thing we wanna do is see how the inverse square law affects shooting a subject with a background. So we're gonna do that next. All right, now the next thing that we're gonna explore is what happens when we're shooting with somebody really close to a light or really far away from the light when we have a background included. And so in fact, I'm gonna move over here just so you can see. So we have our Octobox right here. And again, it's just about a foot or so from Sam. And then way back here, I'm gonna walk all the way back, we have our background. Now, because the light fall off is so dramatic, when we have our subject really close to the light, that background is gonna almost totally disappear. In fact, let me take a picture really fast and show you how this looks. So Sam, look right at me, perfect. Okay, now when we look at that, you can see that Sam is exposed, she looks great, but the background is almost non-existent. There's a little hint of it there, but it's almost non-existent. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move Sam all the way back here, so come on back. We've already preset this, we already metered it, previously and so now we're going to shoot this one more time look right at me beautiful okay now when we have sam next to the background remember the uh, inverse law says that the light fall off is getting so dramatic that there's really not much difference between the light value here and the light value on the background and so when we took the picture here not only did we have sam in the, the photo exposed correctly but the background was also exposed correctly so that's a trick that you can use if you really want to drop out the background put your subject really close to the source of the light and the background farther away, 
if you want to make sure the background and the subject are both exposed, then make sure the background and the subject are close together and both of them are a great distance from the light. Okay, now the next thing we need to talk about is uh, what happens with your exposure when you're getting close or farther away from light and how that impacts you when you're shooting groups. So we're going to do that next. Well, now that we've seen the inverse square law used in several different situations, let me show you what it looks like if we are shooting groups of people because it can really have a large impact on you. So let's say that you have a group of, of people that you're going to shoot three or four people deep. So maybe Sam is the first person, I'm the second person, and there's another person sort of standing back here. So there's a little bit of a distance uh, between the first and last person. Now, if all of your people are close to the source of light, you're really going to run into problems because of the light fall off. In fact, let me show you exactly what I mean. So what we'll do is we'll have Sam play the part of all of the people. And so you're right here at the very first person where they're standing. So go ahead and look right at me. Okay, now go to the second person where they'd be standing. So we'll take a shot here. Wonderful. And then go to the last person. Okay, just like that. Now, when we do this, you can see that we have drastic exposure differences between where Sam was over here and where she is over here. So if you have a group of people, what will happen is the people in the front row are going to look great, but the people in the back row are all going to be way underexposed. So the solution for that is to put people farther away from the light. So Sam, let's go ahead and have you come back here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing but now we're going to have Sam play the role of all the people farther away from the light. So we've metered this already, so I'm adjusting my exposure. So Sam, look right at me. So she's right where the first person would be. Great. Now go where the second person would be. Just like that. Wonderful. And now the third person, I guess that's where the third person would be. And so we've had her move about the same distance. And you can see the difference between the first and the second position that Sam was in. There's almost no difference in exposure. So the inverse square law can really help you solve some issues when you're shooting groups. It can help you isolate backgrounds or include backgrounds or get some really amazing looks for high contrast lighting. Well, thanks so much for joining me this week. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, if you have a question about photography, please send it to me at askmark at adorama.com. And I just might use it in an upcoming episode. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.